What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. We're going to talk about a few different horror topics in this video here today. We're being talking about Scream 7. We'll talk about Saw X. I'll actually give a review for VHS Beyond or a quick reaction anyway. And we'll talk about Nightmare on Elm Street. So starting off here with Scream 7, I did a solo video on this, but just to address it again, Courtney Cox told Variety that she's not officially signed on for the film just yet. She said, I'm not, but there will be a Scream 7. She also made comments about the rewrites. She said they're rewriting all the time. Now that rewrite part excited a few people for different reasons. I again have to stress that while Scream 7's development has been concerning, rewrites are normal and even the last movies went through this as well. And none of them have turned out to be an absolute dog shit train wreck yet. You've you have your pick, of course, between three and six that people often like to talk about as being the weak, the weakest or the worst amongst the fans anyway. But Scream as a franchise has yet to deliver a film that is just complete trash. They'll probably be rewriting and changing during filming, too. If you want to hear my thoughts on the rest of Courtney's comments, watch the video that I put out a few days ago. I'll leave it linked to it or actually I'll just tag it at the end of this video. But yeah, I just want to talk about the rewrites, the rewrite stuff. That's normal, guys. Honestly, yes, there are reasons to think that the rewrites going into this one are a little bit more concerning. I get that. But the rewriting process is normal. And it's also not that shocking that they're taking this long to rewrite the film. If I'm being quite honest, considering what you did last November, was it worth it? I think not. But getting your shit together in the best way possible to put out a quality film you better because if you put out one of the worst screen films ever people are going to always point to what you did to melissa barrera and we're going to ask the question was it worth it and the answer will be no if you put out a complete trash film if you put out the first trash screen movie they're going to reference firing melissa barrera was the catalyst for that also, I did want to highlight that production list, which has been reliable in the past when it comes to upcoming films, does show that Scream 7 is supposed to start shooting in Atlanta, Georgia, specifically on December 2nd. Now, Nev Campbell is the most credible source when it comes to when filming will start right now because she's the only one making comments on it. They're supposed to shoot in December, according to Nev Campbell. We haven't had anything from anyone else involved with production since then there's been reliable people who have gotten things right in the past coming out with information myself included but like i've been stressing although i have seen something that does state january 2025 that is not a confirmation of that we need to wait for the cast and crew to talk about this because production list has december 2nd as the start date it could very well start shooting in January. I'm leaning more on to believe that now more than ever because of the stuff that's coming out about the project. But until someone involved with the production makes it clear, I don't want to hold out for January just yet. I still want to say we should expect it to shoot in December until proven otherwise. Although I have been hearing that other people with connections have also been hearing it's January. So let's talk about Saw 11. We have a Saw 11 update. Oh, boy, oh boy. If Scream and Saw have one thing in common right now, it's the struggle. Viewer Non tweeted this out. He said, this is a bummer, but I've heard from multiple sources that unless there's a big change, Saw 11 probably isn't coming in 2025 either. You know what? <laughs> just Let's just accept Saw X as the great bow out of the franchise the great conclusion to the franchise one of the greatest entries in the franchise too let's just accept saw x as the end point tobin bell's not getting any younger and if the producers have so much of a problem going on behind the scenes and if there's so much disagreement on what i can assume would be what to do creatively and other things let's just cancel saw 11 and i'm not saying that was that's actually what i would want but if you cannot get your crap together Saw X, me and a lot of others, would agree that at least you went out on one of the best high notes a long-running franchise like that could hope to. Saw X had no right being as good as it ended up being. Looking back on the fact that it came out nearly 20 years after that original film and when came out at a time where most people were also thinking to themselves, you know, Jigsaw wasn't the best people there's there's its fans of course people had issues with spiral then you had that wonderful bounce back with saw x if that's all that we get from saw and never anything else again i'm fine 
this stuff with Saw 11, I feel like it's going to piss me off, similar to how the stuff with Scream 7 pisses me off, similar to how the things with Jeepers Creepers pisses me off. And I would rather just see the franchise in on a high note if it comes to it. But if they can get their crap together and deliver a quality 11th Saw movie, that's fine too. But it just seems like, for whatever reason, the struggle is all Saw 11 knows now. And if we don't get it in 2025, I'm probably not going to care about it as much. I am invested in it right now, but the longer it's delayed, the more I don't care. So now I'm going to jump into talking about VHS Beyond. VHS Beyond, I will say, takes the franchise in an exciting new direction. We have like six or five, yeah, five new segments with the backdrop or the focal point being American culture or humanity's obsession with aliens and other worldly entities that are out there. Each one of these segments becomes more deranged and unhinged than the last. The creature designs featured in the very first episode, uh, the very first segment, I should say. That creature design is one of the best creature designs I've seen in this franchise yet. The practical effects are still incredible. And I actually do want to see Justin and Christian Long segment adapted into a feature length film. They did Fur Babies and the touches featured throughout for my Jeepers Creepers fans and the Tusk fans out there. You can see that these films had a big impact on Justin. It was so obvious without even looking up which one he did. It was so clear and obvious which one was his the minute certain details about the characters featured in the segment were revealed. And I'm like, oh, that's very Jeepers Creepers coded, so that's Justin Long. <laughs> the Bollywood segment, Dream Girl, I think it's called, does a great job taking a look at the dangers of AI. Of course, it's a rather extreme depiction of it. Kate Siegel's directorial debut is effectively hopeless and features a wonderful performance. VHS Beyond is a adequate, good time, it's a, another proper entry into the franchise. And I can appreciate the fact that we're going back to seeing some type of overarching narrative as opposed to what I think was going on in the other entries where it was just random segments. These don't feel as random. So I like the overarching story being present here. But the last thing I want to talk about is going to be Nightmare on Elm Street. Shout out to you, Chris, with Comic Book. You follow me. You proposed a question to Robert England and Heather Langingham, who are going on the press junket run right now for the 40th anniversary of Nightmare on Elm Street coming out on 4K, I think. And it was about the idea of Robert England coming back as Freddy Krueger for an R-rated animated Nightmare on Elm Street movie. And I have to say, I would be down for that 100%. I would be down for that only because... And I, I'm not saying it would be the best the best idea because I know some of you out there are probably like, that sounds terrible. But the reason I would be down for it is because if there's any way Robert could come back because he's made it clear he's done physically. Animation wasn't even a thing I thought of, but an animated film, I wouldn't be against it. It depends on, of course, who's doing the animation and how good the animation looks because the animation could be complete crap. But I think an R-rated animated Nightmare on Elm Street film that allows Robert England to return as Freddy Krueger one last time, I think that could be good. But I do also know a part of me thinks, are we becoming a little bit too desperate when it comes to our desire to see Robert England back as Freddy Krueger that we're willing to just accept animated films? And it's like, should we just accept that the man is older, he's content with what he did in Freddy vs. Jason being his last hoorah, a, a good hoorah in terms of the performance, and we should just accept that we need to find a new Freddy? But I don't think an animated film will be, will be a bad idea. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you can never miss a video. In the description, I have links on my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.